so you were telling us just about how you your favorite trip thus far because you have covered a lot of ground in your 20 <laughs> something years I have. Um, so you were living in Australia at the time but got to go to Bali and South Korea and all these other places and I hear South Korea is not somewhere where I would like normally just be like I have to put that on my list but all of my friends that have been are like it is such a surprise and the food is phenomenal is what I hear mm-hmm. so is that the case or was that your experience the food is definitely the best part okay. there's this little tiny island off the coast called Jeju okay um and they call it like the Hawaii of I don't know Asia or maybe Southeast Asia mm-hmm. and they have what's called these famous diving grandmothers and you walk diving along diving grandmothers mm-hmm. and there are these like 80 90 year old South Korean women mm-hmm. and you walk along the beach and it's this kind of like rocky cliff beach and you'll say I you know I want an octopus and they'll go dive into the ocean and they'll just free dive. No no mask, no anything. And they'll get you. So a- they're not like doing snorkel gear or like scuba stuff. It's just them. They like were. Like them and a knife. <laughs> it, pretty much. They were <laughs> much better swimmers oh than I am at this age. And they were, you know, in their 80s and 90s. They were incredibly and You did impressive. swim team, right? Yes, I did. Hey, okay, my goodness. <laughs> but, you know, so these grandmas come up with an octopus and they, you just eat it raw right there on the beach and. They'll pull out a little bottle of, you know, soju or Coke or whatever, and that's your lunch. That was it. So that's like sushi on another level fresh. Pretty much. <laughs> the octopus could go back to the ocean anytime if it we tried just to. cut off one of the tentacles. <laughs> yes. I love that. That's so cool. Okay, well, that's going to be added to my list. Absolutely <laughs> add it. <laughs> yes, so cool. So we, um, something else that I um, recently found out about you, you were quite, are quite the skier. So tell me about that. How did you, I guess, when did you start skiing? Where did you first start skiing? Because I have a feeling it's going to be not like me where I was like Paoli Peaks, Indiana before my parents were like, okay, she's okay enough to take her to Colorado Springs or not the Springs, but Colorado. So where, what did that look like for you? Well, um, I started skiing probably when I was about four or five. Okay. We were living in Venezuela at the time. Okay. And my mom had just been diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And so my dad bought her a condo as a gift to like cheer her up and to yeah. have <laughs> to have a family home to go to and so we spent a long time and we you know looked all over and eventually we found this condo up in Breck and you know we took ski lessons it became our place that we would ski go every school. <laughs> yes <laughs> I mean it we would go throat out there <laughs> ski school is nuts <laughs> it was it was tough it was a tough time in my life yes <laughs> and we would go for you know two weeks at a time and mm-hmm. and we still have the condo I'm actually going up there this weekend and and your mother is still with us? Yes, she's okay. still with us. I was going to say, you were just talking about your mom, so I feel pretty confident in saying that. So, yes, it's been about 20 years in remission. So some mountain therapy, thank, thank God. And then also some mountain therapy clearly helped. I, the fresh That's air amazing. does everyone good. I mean, if someone bought me a condo in Colorado, I think I'd be doing a, a heck of a lot better. Pretty than, much. You know. I, I always tell Ari that's my dream gift. You know, puppy's fine, but condo. You know, slushies, puppies, at. condo in 20 years, babe. <laughs> Ten. Even Ten better. <laughs> I love it. So you, um, I guess, where are some of the places that you've gotten to ski besides Colorado? Because I'm sure oh. it's not just here. Yeah. So let me see. I think Colorado might be the only place in, oh, no. Nope. I've also skied in Park City in the U.S. Okay. But we've also done like northern France, Switzerland, Austria, Germany. Not surprised at all. Those kind of places. Okay. So, <laughs> so you're like the Swiss Alps are a little hard to beat. but I actually have to say. Colorado Mountains beat them. You think so? I do okay. think so. Okay, you might be one of the first people that I've heard say that. What about Breckenridge, because you all are in Breckenridge, mm-hmm. is like just it for you? Does it feel like you're like home base mountain? It feels like home base mountain, and I know this is a really odd thing, <laughs> but just having like cell phone reception on the mountain and always having some place oh, yes. to stop and, you know, like warm soup and that sort of thing, it's just, it's a lot more convenient that is true. Not as hardcore as right. going like all day and being frozen by four and you're like, I'm be off this mountain, I'm a popsicle. And everyone in Europe is just so hardcore about skiing. And so, you know, here you can just roll through it's the true. blues and cruise. But in Europe, they're like, you got to go. You got to go. Get down that mountain. And I remember the first time I got hit by a skier, I expected them to apologize. <laughs> yeah, no. But no, they were just like, <laughs> internationally, you were in my way. Like, how dare you? you <laughs> like, you should have eyes in the back of your head. Exactly. And I was like, I'm nine years old. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, like, I'm a child. Exactly. Help me out. <laughs> so- 